Hello and welcome back. In our last Learn to Knit tutorial, we did this square garter stitch dish rag. Super easy. Now we are going to do what I am calling the stockinette in a frame. So grab your pattern if you have it. For the garter stitch, we cast on 26 stitches. For this one, we're gonna do 32. I am going to show you an alternate cast on this time. Last time we did the backward loop cast on. This time we're going to do what's called the knitted cast on, because guess what? You guys know how to make a knit stitch. Now let's remember, we start with a slip knot. So we cross the short tail over the long tail, fold it down, grab a loop, pull it up. You can watch that a few more times on my first video if you don't remember how to do the slip knot. With this one, now that you know how to do a knit stitch, it should be super easy. You put the slip knot on and you hold it as if you're going to knit. I'm even going to get my tension going on my hand as if I'm going to knit and just keep that little tail out of the way. So we go in through from the um, left to the right, front to the back, throw it around from bottom and over the top, pull it through. But we don't drop this loop because we need to get more stitches on there, not fewer. So we've got this loop up and here you twist around and pop it on the needle. Now we have two stitches on our needle. Now you knit into the second stitch, same as before. From the bottom up over the top, pull it through. Then we take our left hand needle and swirl it around to come up at this needle from the thumb of your right hand. Stick it through that loop. Now we have three loops on the needle. So you can probably get the hang of this. This is why it's called the knitted cast on. Because you're basically knitting a stitch, but instead of dropping it, you're putting it back on the working needle until you have the full number of stitches on there that you need. So this is the second easiest cast on. There are lots more cast ons, trust me. But this is the second easiest and it makes a slightly sturdier cast on than the backwards loop, but almost as easy. Knit a stitch, give it a twist and pop it back on the working, on the um, stitch needle. Now we want to get up to 32. So I'm going to speed the footage up while I keep doing this. If you aren't getting it, rewind and watch it a few more times. I'll show it up real close one more time. Knit a stitch, pull it a little loose, then twist the stitch needle forward and come at this one from behind and slide it onto the stitch needle. That's what it looks like in the back. That's what it looks like on the front. I'm gonna get the correct number. Okay, I'm gonna get the correct number of these onto the needle and then I will get back to you. Thank you. 
Okay, I am back and I have all 32 stitches on my needle using the knit cast on. So let's check out our pattern. It says to knit four rows. So we do that just like we did our garter stitch dish towel. We knit all stitches on both sides, but this time you gotta count your rows. Something that kinda helps is look for your little loose tail. So I'm gonna be knitting towards it once, away from it is number two, towards it again is number three, away from it is number four. So I will have finished number four when I am working yarn at the tip and little tail at the knob. So let me just give you a refresher on your knit stitch. You do that same motion we were using with the knit cast on. Oops. And of course, I split the yarn on the very first stitch. Same motion we did on the cast on. This time we drop the loop. So again, you're going in from front to back and from left side to right side. Front to back, left to right, the working yarn wraps under and over. Front to back, left to right, working yarn under and over. This is just a refresher of what we did in the last one. Now let me do a few with the working yarn in my left hand so you can be reminded of what that looks like. So again, this needle moves the same, front to back, left to right, but instead of having to wrap it under and over, you can just pick it up. It goes around, the yarn goes around the needle the same way, pulls through the same way, but you just pick it up instead of having to wrap it. That's why sometimes the right hand style is called throwing and this one is called picking because you just pick it up. I prefer this style, but some people prefer the throwing, and either way works. So I'm going to knit just this one row and come back to you once I have four rows knit. So remember, you're knitting four rows. So that's front, back, front, back, four rows. All stitches are gonna be knit. And once we get to that fifth row, I am going to teach you the purl stitch. And the purl stitch is how we make what is ultimately called stocking at knitting. Our last dish rag, this is all garter stitch knitting. You will see the difference when we get to the stocking at knitting. So I'm just gonna get you to the end of the row here. Turn it around, get you started on the next one, and then I will come back to you once we're ready to do the purl stitch. So I've knit up to the little tail once, now I'm going to knit away from it, back up to it, and away from it again. And that's how I will know that I am ready for the row where we're going to learn the purl stitch. So let me get you that far and then turn the video back on. Okay, I have knit my four rows. So as you can see, it's the garter stitch bumps, just like on the garter stitch square that we did. Now let's look at the pattern again because we're practicing reading knitting patterns while we are learning the stitches. So 
we cast on 32 stitches. In the abbreviated version, that's CO 32 stitches. We just knit four rows. That's K four rows. Now, repeat the following two rows until you reach desired length. Row one, knit three stitches, purl 26 stitches, knit three stitches. Let's look at that in the abbreviated version. One, K3, P26, K3. Means the same thing, knit three stitches, purl 26 stitches, knit three stitches. And in this one, the repeat is after. Repeat rows one and two until you reach desired length. So those are just two different ways to write the exact same instructions, but it gets you used to the kind of abbreviations that are commonly used in knitting patterns. So now, let's follow those instructions. We are supposed to knit three stitches. We know, we know how to knit. It is left to right, front to back. One, two, three. Now comes time to purl. So all the knit stitches, we've never had to move the working yarn from right where it is. It comes out at the back and we keep knitting at the back. For the purl, you need to wrap that yarn between the two needles. Instead of keeping the working yarn in the back, it comes forward, it comes between the two needles. And then the motion is the opposite. For the knit, it's left to right, front to back. For the purl, it's back to front, right to left. So it's almost like you're just sort of jamming it through and picking it up that front leg. This is the front leg of the stitch. We're just jamming it straight through to pick up that front leg. But you can kind of see it's the exact opposite of the knit. The knit is going in from the left, coming out at the right, and coming going in through the front, coming out at the back. The purl is going in from the right, coming out from the left, and going in from the back, coming out at the front. So we've got the working yarn at the front. We've got our needle stuck through purl style. This time you wrap it over the top of the needle and down to the bottom. And you pull it through and let that loop drop. That is a purl stitch. So back to front, right to left, through that front leg. You keep, as long as you're purling, you keep the yarn coming out of the front towards you. Wrap it over the top and down to the bottom and pull that loop through to the back. So with the knitting, you're pulling the loop through to the front. With purling, you're pulling the loop through to the back. That's why you're going back to front, right to left. Back to front, right to left. Knitting is left to right, front to back. Purling is back to front, right to left. Back to front, right to left. Wrap the yarn over top of it, pull it through the back and keep this working yarn in the front. Now, it's a little trickier with your left hand. This is why some people prefer holding the yarn in their right hand because the purl makes more sense. I do like to hold the working yarn in my left hand. So let me show you how to purl there. You have to keep the yarn in the front still. This needle still does the same action. Back to front, right to left. And where you could just pick it up before this time, you do have to wrap it. So you wrap it just the same, over the top, circle it around so you make that loop that you can pull through to the back. 
Let me demonstrate that again. The working yarn is in the front. The working needle goes back to front, right to left. The working yarn wraps over the top and down to the bottom. The loop gets pulled through to the back. Um, it's a little bit more work for some people until they get the hang of it to purl when you have your working yarn in your left hand. But if you're doing a pattern where you switch between knit and purl frequently, I think that switching between knit and purl is easier when you hold the working yarn in your left hand. But it's one of those things where I recommend trying it both ways and deciding what you like for yourself. So back to front, right to left, wrap the working yarn around the top, pull that loop through to the back and drop the previous loop. And it just comes with practice like anything else. And if you find the fabric bunching up in your hand, go ahead and just spread it down. Give it room. Let me do that a few more times with the right hand. Now remember, we're keeping this working yarn in the front. So it's still a slightly bigger motion to wrap the yarn. So you're moving your whole hand instead of just sort of tipping it. But some people find it more comfortable. Just find what you like best. As long as you've got the same concept. Working yarn in the front. Working needle goes back to front, right to left. Wrap around the top, pull the loop through to the back. Wrap that yarn around the top, pull the new, new loop through to the back. So I wasn't counting the 26, but basically you do all the stitches until you get to those final three. So hang on to those final three because those are going to be knit again. Because remember, the pattern says knit three, purl six, 26, knit three. So once you get to these final three, you know you're gonna have to knit again. So you take that working yarn back in between the needles. Don't wrap it over top of either needle. Take it back in between the two tips and switch back to knitting, which is left to right, front to back and you pull the new loop through to the front. So we did knit three, purl 26, knit three. That is row one of the repeat. Okay, row two is even easier. Row two is knit all stitches or in the abbreviated version, K32 or knit 32. So I'm going to kind of fast forward through this knit row and then show you how the stockingette stitch looks as it grows. Okay. Once you reach the end of that row two, you can start to see how the stockingette is going to grow. So it's the V's. It's these little V loops that is the traditional knit look that you probably recognize from most store-bought sweaters and things. That is called stockingette stitch. So these bumps down here, these are the garter stitch ridges. The reason we do the garter stitch border is because garter stitch lays flat. Stockingette tends to curl in, but if it's inside this frame of garter stitch, it will lay flat too. So 
you knit all the way across on the front side and on the back side you knit three purl 26 and knit three but it's going to keep looking bumpy it's a slightly different bumpy as it grows you'll be able to tell that it's a slightly different bumpy than the garter stitch ridges but at first you won't be able to see the difference but as you follow this pattern just know on the bump side the side that's covered with bumps it's knit three purl 26 knit three on the side with the traditional V loops here. It's gonna be knit all the way across. So I will check in with you about halfway through this to do some troubleshooting, and then I will show you how to finish. Okay, I am now about halfway through dishcloth number two. And I am back to demonstrate one more time for you how each row is worked and then to do a little bit of troubleshooting. Might actually do the troubleshooting first while I'm working this side. So on the side where you can see the stocking at, remember there's the smooth side or the side with the V's, that's called stocking at stitch and the bumpy side. This is called reverse stocking at. It doesn't have the same ridges that garter stitch had because it's just a full plane of bumps. Garter stitch was a row of bumps and then a row of V's. Well, this is all bumps the whole way. And then this is all V's the whole way. That is stocking at and reverse stocking at. And this is the side where you work the knit stitch the whole way across. So again, you go in from left to right, circle around from underneath to over the top, pull it through. That is your knit stitch. Doing it left-handed for a few, then I'll do it right-handed for a few. Now we'll do right-handed for a few. But the needles go the same way. Front to back and left to right. And the yarn goes underneath and wraps around the top. No matter which hand you hold it on, those two facts remain the same. So, say you're knitting along and you get distracted and whoops, a stitch starts dropping. So grab it when you can to stop it from unraveling any further. If you don't grab it, it'll just go all the way down. Now I'm going to pull the needles through a little bit so that everything else is anchored. This is one where it's good to have a crochet hook handy, but I'll show it to you with a tapestry needle also. You could even just do it with the tip of a needle. So this one is about to lose that also. Let me make sure it doesn't lose that one. Ah. Okay, what I wanna save right here is this loop. There we go. So that's a loop. When you drop stitches in stocking it, it's super easy to fix. You go to the side where are all the stitches of the V's, all the stitches are flat. Grab the next stitch down from where the stitches are dropping. And then make sure you go in order. It's like a ladder. You gotta go one rung at a time. You grab the next rung of the ladder, pull it through the loop. Simple as that. I'm gonna show it to you with a tapestry needle in case you don't have a crochet hook on hand. You go to the next rung of the ladder. You're gonna have to sort of take both hands with this. There we go. And you pull it through. So that's pretty easy peasy. Now, what if 
you drop two stitches at once. Again, you want to try to stop them before they go any further. And sometimes a good way to stop them is just to slide them back onto your needle. You know that this isn't where they belong, but it'll stop them from unraveling any further. And it might make them a little more easy to work with. This one is splitting, which automatically makes it a little more difficult. There we go. So, I'll turn it around and show you. Fortunately, I caught one of them before it fell all the way out, but I want you to see how it goes when it falls all the way out. So I'm gonna pull that one all the way out. Okay, so now you see you have just one ladder rung to worry about, but two stitches in a row. But guess what? The principle is exactly the same. Get your crochet hook through the first stitch. Find that ladder rung that you dropped. And pull it on through. Now I'm gonna move that over to this needle temporarily, just so that it doesn't fall any further. Now there's still a ladder rung behind this stitch. So let me get my crochet hook inside this stitch. And you just find the ladder rung behind it. So even if you drop two or three stitches in a row, don't panic. The key is to not panic. Stop it from unraveling as soon as you can. Just grab a hold of those stitches, use your fingers first, then stick them onto your needle or stick them onto a crochet hook or a tapestry needle, whatever you have handy to stop them from unraveling further. And if you're working on the purl side and things drop and start to unravel, just turn it around and fix it from this side. It's easier. Okay, now that I have done the troubleshooting, I'm just gonna keep on knitting across so that when the yarn keeps splitting. So I'm gonna finish knitting across this row, then I will show you the backside row one more time, and then we will move on. Okay, now we're on to the backside or the bumpy side. Now this, remember, is knit three, purl 26, knit three. Now it's all bumpy. How do you tell which are the knit stitches and which are the purl stitches? You gotta look for the ridges. With the knit stitch, it's gonna be a ridge, and then there's going to be the Vs in between. If you start getting a bunch of Vs, it means that you have accidentally been purling on one side and it's turning into stockingette stitch. And then if you don't get the V's in between the ridges, it means that you're purling on the other side. And again, you're turning it into stockingette. If you're knitting all three of these stitches, you're gonna have a ridge and then a V, and then a ridge and then a row of V's. When you're doing the stocking yet, it doesn't have the ridges. It just bumps the whole way across with no V's in between. You know, giving it a tug, you don't see those rows of V's in between. There's no ridges to be had. So we're gonna knit our three and then purl our 26. Knit one, knit two, knit three. Then I'm gonna start purling with the left hand and then move back to the right. Don't forget, you bring your yarn forward in between the two needles. Don't wrap around either needle. Make sure you come right in between. Now you go back to front, right to left, and wrap it over the top. Back to front, right to left, 
wrap it over the top. Okay, let me show you right-handed for a little bit. Then bring that yarn forward in between the two needles. And the needle motion is still the same. You're still going into the loop from back to front, right to left. And you're still wrapping the yarn around the top of the needle. I saw those ridges coming up, so I went to check and count four laps. So that means one more purl stitch. And then again, that yarn goes back in between. Don't wrap anything. Don't wrap it over this needle. Don't wrap it over this needle. Go in between. And go back to the knit motion for those last three stitches. Okay. I hope that that gave you another good angle on how this second dishcloth is worked and how to work the stocking out stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up until it's a square. I'm gonna use that same trick I used last time. You fold a corner up until it comes level with the needle and I still have a bunch that's not covered up, which means that I am not square yet because once you're square, this will cover the whole thing when you fold it up like this. So I will get back to you once this is finished. Feel free to watch the whole thing first or go ahead and pause it until you get caught up. Okay, now I have my stocking yet in a frame dishcloth, almost square. So that's as long as I want it to go. So you can see the stocking is this lovely smooth stretch of V's and it's got this garter stitch frame and that's all I have to finish. Just the pattern says, once desired length is achieved, knit four rows. Or in the abbreviated version, Repeat until you reach desired length, knit four rows. Then we bind off and weave in ends. And that will be it with this one. Now, at the beginning of the video, I told you that the reason we have to do this garter stitch frame is so that it lays flat because garter stitch will lay flat but stocking at curls. But I thought you might want an example of how that looks. So I did just stocking it, no garter stitch, a tiny little swatch for you. And as you can see, this thing really wants to curl in on itself. I can't even get it to lay flat on this side, it just curls right up. And this side, the only reason it stays flat is because it's kind of smushed down. But as soon as you pick it up, it curls right in. But having that garter stitch border will help your cloth stay nice and flat instead of curling all over the place like this one does. So I'm going to knit my four more rows and then I will give you a refresher on binding off and weaving in ends. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished my garter stitch border here and I am ready to bind off. If you need a refresher on binding off and weaving in ends, I'm going to do sort of a double speed refresher on that right after this. And then in my next video, I am going to teach you how to 
knit a dishcloth from tip to tip, starting with just four stitches. So you will learn how to add stitches to a row to make it grow. And then you will learn how to take away stitches from a row to make it shrink. So that's what we're gonna be doing next time. And stick around if you need the refresher. And if not, congratulations, you are done with your second dishcloth. Have fun crafting.